Well, hello guys, Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of Joe Boo's Day Job. And I'm right here with the Red Brick House, and this has been a journey. This has been a hellacious journey. Um, you know how they always say, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it? To make a long story short, I was introduced to some people that were trying to save the building behind me here, the Red Brick House, which originally was a... Uh, masonry school it's the third oldest as far as we can tell masonry school in the country it was built and finished in 1820 the bricks were handmade actually right out the back here the thing that's crazy about this is one of the closing battles of the civil war came literally through here in the battle of waynesboro it became the masonic lodge the lee lodge after the civil war then eventually became the blacksmith's home of the the, the town and eventually the city bought it because they were going to widen the street here and so that began my problem the city had rented it out since the 50s so there's multitudes of people who used to live in this house and so many people were connected to it and the city after they built the walmart next door was going to destroy it because it was in such disrepair oh i'm okay they're not gonna run me over um i ended up basically having a speech in front of the town council and they said okay we'll gift it to you what <laughs> and i've been extremely happy yeah the sign i know uh, extremely happy about having it the only problem is because they originally were going to widen the road it is commercial highway and what that means is it's a commercial business and you have to have off-street parking and by the square footage, for every 400 feet, you need a parking space. So for the size of the structure, I'd have to provide four parking spaces that you could pull in, be able to park, and turn around and come back. Not enough land here. I'd looked into buying the lot next door um, in there, but that became kind of not cost effective. And turning this into a commercial building is not what I want. Well, all I really want to do is I want to save our history. And I say our history good and bad everything on here this is american history when this place was built there were only 23 states in the union including texas wasn't one of them yeah the louisiana purchase had just gone through the missouri compromise was just done the year that this opened up this house has stood the test of time and my goal has been to try and save it well with the help of my man jet d and talking to luke the city planner we're working on changing the zoning from commercial highway to local business, which means I can actually convert it back into a home. In which case, I will restore it much like it originally was. Of course, I'm going to have some AC in it, but you won't see the ductwork or anything. But you'll be able to see the original woodworking. We'll end up replastering the walls much like they were on the original part of the house. You can see where I've actually done some work on here to help preserve it. We've already gone through and repaired the bricks using the lime mortar. We've gone through here and started working on the underneath of it, of taking care of putting the tongue and groove boards on it. But in order to go any further, we gotta be able to get our building permits. And so, I'm headed over to the city hall, city council, have another meeting. Let's cross our fingers and see how this goes. Well, good evening friends, Mark Holmes here with. Reactions? Two, right? Didn't he say that they put parentheses? Well, they he did. keeps fucking with Well, me. I mean, they did on YouTube recently with, with one of the new updates with them and Google. Alright. Well, I don't recognize that number, so I'm going to let it go to voicemail. What? It might be the people with the um, bricks. Well, they, they can leave a message. Because they're out that way. Okay, I don't know. Okay, any, anybody in Florida, but that's only that's I, only people listen, that we know. I've been getting ones from Hawaii, from the Des Moines, I, Iowa, and everything else, well, and they're all they selling do. car insurance and or car, uh, you know, warranty service and health care. I mean, no, just no, sick no, of, no, the I ain't one? answering the damn phone. No, and then they ask you about your student student loans. Right, I, I ain't been no, a student. Have any student loans? Anyway, <laughs> because it's they're fishing. Anyway, I'm actually about 30 minutes away from having uh, going to city council uh, for the Red Brick House and 
keeping our fingers crossed. And we're the only ones on the docket, too. Yeah. <laughs> you got you got you gotta love you gotta love small town America because uh, the city planner called me, not his secretary. He called me. He said, you know, I forgot to send you an email to remind you about the meeting tonight. You're planning on being here, right? And I'm like, yeah. It's like I was changing and getting cleaned up for it. And I was like, oh, good. Uh, he said that uh, we're the only thing on the docket. So hopefully we can get in and we can get right back out and get up the road because tomorrow morning I get knee surgery and I pray that it's better than what it is right now because it hurts like a mother upper. But it's one of those crazy days because it's NFL silly season. You know that, right? We've got, you know, players that are getting in trouble. Thank God they're none of the Cowboys. So that's why you don't really hear about it that much. You know, Frank Clark gets arrested a second time. Who cares? Yeah, but, you know, if, if, if Zeke him. Elliott picks his nose, it's like the worst thing in the world. You know, the booger police are going to come out after him. But now, you know, like Mike Greenberg has been on this Washington football team kick that, you know, they're one of the best teams in the NFC and everything else. And the Cowboys, you know, he's like, the Cowboys are going to be eight and a half and eight and a half. Okay. All right. Whatever. So all of a sudden now, there's a few people that are beginning to give the Cowboys some love. Jeff Darlington thinks they're going to go 12 and five and says, you know, Dak Prescott, you know, nobody survives losing their franchise quarterback and, and does well. He said, just nobody. He's like, there's no team out there that's going to lose their starting quarterback, and they're going to be great. He said, not only that, you know, you lose Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, Zach Martin. Your offensive line is in flux. You've lost your quarterback. You know, basically he's saying, you're ass. You, you know, you can't sit there and blame Dak Prescott and the Cowboys organization for that season because you just did not have the horses. And I have to agree, when you get to your sixth offensive tackle, Bro, you got no chance. So, Jeff Darlington, like I said, saying 12 and 5. Damian uh, Woody is saying NFC East Championship, and they could go all the way. It's like, no, don't say, don't put out there SB. Don't, 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 no, don't no, say no. that. Oh, no, no, you can say we'll win one playoff game. I'll give, I'll give them that. I'm just going to say we win the NFC East. I'm not even going to say we win a playoff game. I, 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 I would say one playoff game, but I want to say Super Bowl. Because here's the problem. Expectations are the building blocks of resentment. When you're expected to do something and you don't, everybody's disappointed. It's kind of like this. When I build cabinets, if I tell people, hey, man, uh, you know, I'll have your cabinets done in four weeks. And it takes five weeks to do it. Man, you said it was going to be four weeks, man. What's going on? If I tell you it's going to be six weeks and they're done in five weeks, guess what? I'm a hero. Because the expectations weren't there. They aren't anticipating it. You know, it's kind of like, you remember the ketchup commercials where, where they, they say, anticipation. They were like, you're making me wait. You know, you got the ketchup and it's slowly running out the bottle because they, they didn't know the Paul Alexander technique where you tap the 57. Yeah, Paul Alexander. Remember that coach? That's how he could tell if his offensive linemen were smart and if they could play football. If they knew to tap the 57 on the ketchup bottle. But see, what he didn't realize is everybody got squeeze bottles now. So, I get, you know, Damian Woody, uh, you know, on the Cowboys being my, and a few guys. And I, I get the typical haters that are hating on the Cowboys and things. But this scares me. This truly scares me. Is Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith talking about the Cowboys. He even thinks that they're going to win the NFC East. Well, you know what he likes. You know what he likes when it comes to the holidays. Well, he, 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 see, he, he wants us to be miserable. He, he, we all know. Okay, <laughs> in, in case you didn't know. Remember how Stephen A. Smith used to say, I hate the Cowboys, the Cowboys, I hate them. Right, right. You remember that, right? It was up until I, Joe Boo Sports Report, I exposed his ass. I exposed his ass at the Super Bowl at the NFL Commissioner's Party because he was hanging out with Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones. He was hugging all up on I was like, get a robe. Get a room, Stephen A. Get a room. And I put it out there. I exposed Stephen. And after that, 
he started admitting, oh, I love Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones. They're cool people. I love, you know, the play. It's the fans I hate. Yeah, Stephen A., you hate me, don't you? You hate me, yeah. Because I remember when you tried to knock Joe Boo out, and that's a true story. He literally punched Joe Boo in the face. I'll have to find that clip from, from in Houston. He did. Literally. Knocked Joe Boo on the ground. I should sue his ass for that anyway. I don't think statutes of limitation have run out. But I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Stephen A. Smith should have a comedy show. Wasn't he funny? When he was talking about the woman coming up at the airport, said, you know, he's at the airport and everything else, and this woman pulls up, Stephen A. Smith, I, Stephen A. Smith, he said, like, 71-year-old woman, said she'd come up to me and everything and says, how about them cowboys? I was like, okay, hey, that was pretty funny. But his whole spiel today was actually funny. But, he, you know, he, he still hopes that the cowboys break a heart. Now, I'm going to put the clip on here. Now, what may happen is the YouTube police, the ESPN police may end up, you know, like, you know, blocking it. So if you don't get the clip on there, you can search the interweb for it. The interweb. Did I say the interweb? The internet for it, and you can check it out. But it, it was actually pretty funny. All right. We got 25 minutes. Should we go in early? I want to make sure we, we want to make sure that we don't get passed over. I'm Mark Holmes, of course, with Michael Anthony. Fitness. Reactions. Don't forget to check it out. And don't forget to check out my day job because if this goes well, we'll be working on the Red Brick House and we'll be bringing it on that other channel. See ya. All right, so we're inside the city chambers here waiting. We've got about 12 minutes or so before uh, we talk about the zoning and hopefully we get this thing through. And uh, can't wait to see what happens. Uh, we'll have to come back again in another month. So this is, they put a sign out front so that way if anybody has any objections to the change in the zoning, and typically it's not being changed back to residential. Typically it's being changed residential into commercial. I don't think anybody would object to me fixing the house so it looks like something again. So keep your fingers crossed. All right, get ready to kick this thing off. It is 7 o'clock. And... I gotta get up here and speak. You know how I hate speaking in public. Comments that are not on the agenda? Okay, so we need to have a public hearing on a request by Mark Holmes to rezone a one point, I mean a, a zero point one seven one acre parcel. Tax map number 45-2-9B, located at 1017 New Hope Road, from HB Highway Business District to LB Local Business District. So, I think we can have a little presentation from the staff on this public hearing. It's located uh, off of West Broad Street uh, in the central part of the city, in the downtown region. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezoning of the parcel from HB Highway Business to LB Local Business. The property has a brick house, commonly known as the Little Red Brick House, that was built in 1866 and has since fallen into disrepair and is vacant. Uh, the applicant's intent is to restore the building back to its original condition for use as a single family residence. Current zoning does not allow for use as a single family residence and the rezoning would allow this by right. The uses around the parcel include the neighborhood Walmart uh, across the street on the west side, single family homes along Ohio Street and <coughs> the Willow Oak parking lot next to the Roses there, and then the old Presbyterian Cemetery to the south and east. This request is considered a downzoning since the LP district allows for less intense uses than the HB districts. Uh, 
HB districts are generally more auto-oriented and intended for parcels fronting on major arterials and highways like uh, Broad Street. The properties adjacent to this parcel are a mix of commercial and single-family residences, so the rezoning <coughs> to the LB would have little impact on these surrounding properties. Uh, in addition, the rezoning would not preclude the possibility of a small-scale business or office locating here in the future. And there are no additional impacts on traffic and anticipated because the rezoning would reduce the overall development possible on the parcel. Uh, the rezoning would create an LB parcel in the middle of a larger HB zoned area, uh, but the current zoning is inconsistent with the existing building stock and the other uses in the area. And it's also inconsistent with the comprehensive plan. And then a block to the south between Broad and Main Street are a grouping of parcels zoned LB. The compre Comprehensive Land Use Plan's designation, designation of this parcel is medium density residential. Uh, it sits in the middle of one of the largest neighborhoods whose zoning doesn't actually match the land use plan. Despite being zoned, zoned HB, the area is primarily made up of single family residences and small commercial structures. Um, while the parcels fronting on Broad Street are appropriately zoned HB, the land use plan's desired use for the other parcels in this area is medium density residential. The rezoning would make this a possible use for this parcel. Staff is recommending approval of this request. Uh, the rezoning is consistent with the long-term vision for the area and has been determined appropriate for this property. Long-term, Planning Commission may want to reconsider rezoning the other parcels located in this area. Um, the area between Broad Street and the railroad tracks is one of the largest areas in the city where the zoning doesn't match the current land use plan. Parcels currently facing Broad Street could remain HB, while the parcels farther back, farther away, could be rezoned to RG5 or RMF, uh, with some transitional parcels zoned LB or MXB. Um, and that's all I have for you. And ready for any questions you might have? Well, as I pick on you all the time, why is this not spot zoning? As the zone is now. Um, per per. Um, our attorney is it's not spot zoning in this case because it's um, in line with our comprehensive plan. Then why don't we just rezone all the residential area all along uh, Ohio and I think old New Hope Road? I think it's residential. I drove it today. It is all residential. I think that would be appropriate long term. That said, we kind of burned through our advertising budget doing the MXP rezoning, so maybe that could be next year's project. Well, this is the second, the second piece we're rezoning mm -hmm. that I raised that question about, and the area year is around. appropriate for rezoning. Yeah. I, I think it would be appropriate to pursue a couple additional planning commission-driven general rezonings in the future. And then just do a rather hit at one time with an advertisement for about two different areas. Right. I mean, are you talking about? Holding this up, I, let the, I think. No, I'm not talking about holding it up. But I'm just I think we consider consider this a step in the right direction, and then follow with. That's um, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe follow with the other contiguous areas that you discussed, turning into a more sensible zoning. Is this um, is that building not considered a historical building here in our area? Is this the first schoolhouse in Winsboro? It's, it's not actually designated on any of the historic registers. Um, and I also believe landowners here, or applicants, yes. excuse me, is here yeah. to answer any questions we have. Yeah. Well. It's appropriate if the, are, are you, any more questions for planning commission? Okay, if uh, the applicant wants to approach the podium, just give your okay. address. I am Mark Hull, and I actually live in Northern Virginia, um, in Springfield. Um, but I have numerous properties that are in Waynesboro. And it was about, I guess, four years ago, I was actually here at the town council. And they always say, um, be careful what you wish for because you might just get it. Um, I got tied up with the Red Brick House Committee. And the house, there's actually a mistake on there. It was actually built in 1820 when it was finished. Um, it was actually a Revolutionary War general um, who ended up building it. He's actually buried in Stanton, and his headstone is actually made out of bricks, so he has an affinity for I, when I first saw the house, fell in love with it because it's our history, all of our history. 
good and bad. And knowing that it's been here for 200 years, my goal was to try to save it. The problem has been for the course of the last four years with it being zoned highway, there's just not enough space in there to put in parking for it without destroying the house. Yeah. And turning it into a commercial space, I don't want to turn it into it. I want to make it to a place where there's so many people who have been tied to this house. The reason I got involved, because all these people who used to live in this house would want to be able to come through and see it. And so turning it back into a single family home, it's a place I come down when I'm down here working and things like that. I can have my own little you know, home office there as well. And it could be a place that people can see how it was originally done. I had started doing a little bit of the work on it, but unfortunately because of the zoning and going through, it's just not cost prohibitive to do the highway parking and everything else. I've looked at buying the lot next door to do that. But in essence, with the cemetery that's right there, you really don't want anything else in there. You really want to keep this pristine. Uh, you know, literally, when you think about this, there was only 23 states in the union when this place was built. And it would be a travesty for it to be just falling to the ground. If I can answer any questions about it. You so your purpose would be to open it to the public? And you um, it's funny because I've had people, I actually had a, a gentleman who was about 93 years old and said, I want to just come in here and live the rest of my life and die in this house. And so um, I come down here because I have other rental properties, there's nothing here, so I come down a couple of days a week. But, you know, if somebody wanted to stay here, or, you know, and things like that, or see how it was originally done, I have a vision of it because it was originally a schoolhouse, and it's from as far as we can tell, the third oldest schoolhouse masonry in the country. Um, there's a historic schoolhouse, I think it was built in 1837. This one predates it. It's just never been registered. Um, after that, the Civil War, the closing battle, of course, in Waynesboro came through the property. After that became the Lee Lodge, where Robert E. Lee gave his permission for the name to be used as the Lee Lodge. And then after that, the town's blacksmith actually lived there. So I envision taking some of the rooms and dedicating it all to each one of those periods as part of history. So when somebody comes through, it's not technically a historic, you know, like the house that's over here, mm -hmm. but the, you know, uh, but you can at least get the feel of what it originally was. So then people could visit. People could, yes. You're going to set it up. Yes. People can come and, yes. and I mean, appreciate the historical yes. meaning of that. Yeah, I think that's really important. It's mm -hmm. a landmark. Yes, I, I've actually already gone through because I'm a, I'm a cabinet maker. I do woodworking stuff. Um, when I originally got it, you may have noticed that originally it had all of the windows were boarded up. I took the original sashes and reclaimed the, as much of the wood as I could to rebuild those original ones. The front door that I built was actually lumber that was up underneath the house and stuff. So I'm trying to restore it and want to restore it much like it originally was. That's good. Um, the addition that's to the, I guess if you're looking at the front of the house, the left, yep. what area is that? Because it doesn't match anything. That doesn't match. Um, as far Are as I can tell. Are you going to take that down? No, I'm actually going to keep that on there because um, that was put on right around the early 1900s. Oh, okay. Okay. And again, what we end up doing is the original masonry walls, of course, you got to use lime, mortar, and stuff. Yep. I want to go back through and parse those walls like they were because part of the problem is and one of the reasons why I didn't want to update it to be commercial, if you go through and frame up the walls, put insulation in there, basically the walls have to breathe. Once they stop breathing, all those original timbers and stuff will literally rot out and it will fall on the ground. Yep. Um, that was actually the original reason why you had the bricks that came out of the side of it. Somebody came through with regular more masonry, uh, cement, and bricks, because they're hard and don't breathe, the house rejected it like a kidney. Yep. It just kicked it out. So you have to be careful when you're working on something that's this old. Now the second part of that is actually where the kitchen, the dining room, and the bathroom and stuff in the house, we go through and fix that as well. But again, that's still part of the history. So when you look at the link of the chain of 1820 through, you know, here we are in 2021, it's still a link of the chain that's still part of the history of it. So you wouldn't want to take that off. You plan on doing any architectural uh, digging on the grounds to find the original, maybe the foundation for the blacksmith? Well, you know, we've had. Or do you know where where it is? It's it's actually it's funny because we've actually found a couple of pieces 
um, that were around that we have no idea. In fact, I have pictures sent to the Smithsonian to try and figure it out. But as we've been working underneath of it, we found old newspapers from the 50s after we took off some of the layers of floor stuff. And when you see some of the cartoons and stuff, I mean, you talk about, mm, they, they were really, really racist and things like that. Underneath the house, we found powder tins that were brass. The company went out of business in 1898. Uh, inside one of the interior walls, we found, and we actually found the descendants of them, we found it was like a mirror on one side and a picture on the other side. We found out this is a, this lady's great grandmother. So there's all kinds of stuff that we've been finding as we've done a little bit of work and stuff on there. Uh, who knows what else will be there as we go through and try and save it. Are those things that you'll display? Oh, definitely, yes, yeah. definitely, yeah. We already have all of those things and stuff in there. That's interesting. Are you working with any local uh, historical art, uh, well, archaeologists? I don't know any actually offhand. How about um, I give you a name? Okay, I would love that. Ben Ford, Ravana. Okay, architecture in Charlottesville. Okay. Um, I work for the University of Virginia. Uh, he has done multiple excavations up there. He's the one that found the cistern that was on the uh, east side of the rotunda when they renovated that. Oh, okay. And because of it, they redesigned the underground entry into the caving area for the rotunda. He's also done excavation work for me when I was a project manager and we discovered uh, some original uh, serpentine wall foundations that nobody knew was mm -hmm. there. So he would be a good one to consult with. Uh, Definitely. But yeah, I think he's on the web. Mm -hmm. Ben Ford, right ben Ford. architect, okay. archaeologist, mm -hmm. archaeology. Um, but yeah, he'd be a good one for you to Contact. So yeah, I know a little something about preserving historic structures. And yeah. You can't go in there with regular today oh, no, no, cement no. from today and patch any of that stuff. Yeah, it, it, it'll literally just destroy it. And that's where I, I really want to bring it back because it's actually amazing because the floor joists is underneath of it are logs that are flattened out. Are they hard pine? The, well, the flooring itself is hard pine. The hard bits are actually about an inch and a quarter. You can tell they're hand. So, yep. And it's funny because you didn't know that because there were so many layers of flooring that were on top. Of it. Once we pulled it off, there are 13, 14 inch wide pieces of hard pine flooring that are on there that are just simply beautiful. There's actually four fireplaces in the original part of the house and two other chimneys on the back side. So it's, you know, to me, it's a treasure. Yep. And uh, I look forward to actually doing things like this. I really enjoy doing things like this. I've done work with the Smithsonian where we worked on the Smithsonian Castle. Um, because of the earthquake, they ended up having one of their main beams that started literally falling off a ledge because they didn't worry about earthquakes back then. We had to go through, literally, dig into the wall to go ahead and put on supports for it. And thinking that this was built in 1854, you feel like you're a link in the chain of the history and stuff like that. And that's what I want to do for them. Thank you so much, Ed. Okay. It's, Ed, your, uh, your passion and enthusiasm <laughs> yeah, is much you. appreciated. Again, we love when people show up to our meeting. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now I have to wait another month for the city council to approve it, but they're recommending it. They're like, they said it's a slam dunk. That's uh, big news. In fact, they seem to actually love the whole idea well, no, no, of it. No, they said a lot of that area is going to be rezoned. Yeah, it should be rezoned for residential, residential instead of commercial. So technically, what, what that zoning is would be typically like auto repair. There's not enough space over there. And with that cemetery right there, um, that's not the best use of it. But that would have been what had been planned a long time ago. And of course, things change. So that's it. I was nervous and um, I was definitely nervous. And uh, hopefully I didn't sound like a freaking idiot, but <sighs> well, okay, like I said, I felt very, very nervous talking to them, but it hey, sounded like hey, it you worked. You want to tell your boys? Yeah, I'm going to tell them next. All right, <laughs> go back, pick up our tools, and get up the road so I can get some rest before tomorrow. Red Brick House. 
one step closer to starting to work on it.